Beef producers need to do a good job of controlling flies on their animals. There are two types of flies that are the major problem with our beef cattle. The first is the face fly. This is the large fly, about the size of a normal house fly that we see around the face of the animal. This particular fly does not have biting mouth parts. It's more like a sponge. And what it does is feed on the secretions from around the eye. The bad part of this is that they can spread pink eye very easily because of that uh, pink eye organism being in the fluids that are coming out of an infected animal. Also, these flies do annoy the uh, animals quite a bit. The other fly that we have quite a problem with in our beef cattle operation are horn flies. And these are those small flies that we see on the animal's back. And we generally see those by the hundreds. Uh, if you've ever noticed a cow out in the pasture and the tail is, is swished up over the back, you'll see the flies rising just kind of like a cloud. And these would be the, uh, the horn flies. Uh, research has indicated that we may have re a reduction in gain from uh, one-tenth of a pound up to fifteen hundredths of a pound. So that gets to be quite expensive. Uh, this also does cause quite a bit of discomfort to the animal because we are looking at a fly that does have biting mouth parts and is actually piercing the skin and, and getting a blood meal. So what we've got to do is, is to use the chemicals that are available that will control both the horn flies and the um, face flies. Uh, we have two classes of insecticides that are currently on the market for use. We have the synthetic pyrethroids and the organic phosphate materials. These are applied in a number of different techniques. Uh, they may be on ear tags, which that is something that a lot of producers have gone to. Maybe on back rubbers, oilers, sprays, dusters. Uh, uh, also, there are some products available uh, that can be fed orally that will break the life cycle of these flies. When we are using the available uh, chemicals uh, to control flies, we need to be sure that we do not develop any resistance. To keep the possibility of resistance low, uh, we need to use the uh, synthetic pyrethroids for two years, followed by one year with the organic phosphate. If we stay in this rotation, the chances of developing resistance is quite low. Uh, there have been a uh, few combination uh, ear tags out there that have both type products and they do an extremely good job of controlling the flies. But the bad thing is once they develop a resistance to that, we do not have another class of chemicals to go to. So our general recommendation is to either use an organic phosphate or a synthetic pyrethroid and not use the, the combination. When we think about uh, using these products, if we're using the, the fly tags in particular, we need to uh, put those tags in the animals sometime about mid-May to the 1st of June, and hopefully that will carry the animals pretty much through the fly season. Uh, most of these tags are going to be lasting from three to five months, most of them in that three to four range, so we need to be using some type of fly control uh, early in the season before we put the tags in and then it may even be necessary to use something in the, in the fall once the tags have, uh, have lost their potency. Uh, I think the key here is, is to watch the animals and, and watch the level of fly control and if, if we're not getting the job done then we may need to uh, come in with sub, supplemental type uh, uh, application method in order to keep those fly numbers down. Again, monitoring is extremely important all the way through. If we're not using ear tags uh, that have the chemicals in them, we're using one of the other methods. We need to be sure that that applicator is kept charged so we keep those fly numbers down. If you'd like additional information regarding fly control, uh, please contact your local extension agent.